Thank you, Mr. President. I too rise in support of the Senator Rosen motion to reject the conference committee report. And I do so uh, conflicted because I am a strong supporter of the Women's Economic Security Act. I'm a strong champion for women and for the importance of women in our communities, in our state, in our nation, and in our world. And uh, in my experience, when women are part of the equation, we all do better. I think if you look at the way uh, women operate, with the, whether it be in uh, an elected office, whether it be uh, in their jobs, whether it be trying to resolve conflict, uh, women actually bring forward a style that in many cases is quite effective. In fact, there have been studies that have shown that in countries where women uh, play a major role in the workforce, GDP is greatly enhanced. And so when we talk about Women's Economic Security Act, one of the things we might consider is that it's actually Minnesota's Economic Security Act because you know, rather than a view that women need our help, I would contradict that, and I'd say, no, we need women's help. And so, for me, this bill is about paving the way so that women have the opportunity to bring forward the contribution that they really are determined to make and have the ability to make. I look at my own personal story, and each one of us brings our personal story to our uh, work here in the Senate. And I remember in 1984 um, having my first son and then looking at the idea of going back to work in a demanding job where I was traveling every month. And so I quit. It was like I, I didn't even have a choice. I was not going to go back to that life and not be with that little baby. And so for a year, we stuck with that, and we struggled very, very seriously financially, and I had to go back to work. And when I went back to work, I got a very good job. And, uh, and once again, I was in that same situation where I was very conflicted by the amount of time away from my child. And at that time, my mother actually started a new business called Work and Family uh, Resources because she was determined to make a difference. And she was really a pioneer in this effort. Uh, my mom was the first one to um, have companies start daycares in their businesses. She had a newsletter that was subscribed to nationally around work-life flexibility balance. My mom is 80, and just three years ago, we all joined her in Washington, D.C., where she was given an award and recognized for her work in work family life equi equity. So, Mr. President, Senator Goodwin, can we get back to the bill? What what point are we on here? Uh, uh, Senator Goodwin, we're debating the motion to uh, re-refer back to committee, and I think the discussion's germane, Senator. Miss, Mr. Uh, Chairman, yeah, Senator Goodwin. Um, so. I'm sharing my story because I want it very clear and on the record that I stand here and look at what's in this bill through the lens of a deep and profound commitment to the essence of what it means to empower women. So, uh, so having said that, and um, and you know, I, I wondered about sharing my personal story and its relevance, but. But I think it is important. It's important for each of us to understand that these are real issues women face. And so the issues filled through this bill are things we have to tackle. But there is one provision in particular that I am so greatly concerned about that I am supporting this motion. And that is the provision in the bill with regard to comparable worth. Now, Senator Pappas has assured me and assured others that this bill does not contain comparable worth. Why wouldn't we want it to contain comparable worth? I don't think we'd want it to contain that because I don't think it's an appropriate measure of determining whether or not we're equitably paying between men and women. Comparable worth is a construct which compares jobs in broad classifications. So for example, the first broad classification in the EEO1 um, document that's submitted to the federal government is professional. Professional includes doctors, 
engineers, marketing executives, nurses, that's within professional. They are all professional. But then a company has to certify, and by the way, this is a CEO is required to certify that they adhere to equitable pay standards in broad job classifications. Now, you could say, well, surely we aren't going to come after a company and say, we don't compare engineers to marketing executives with regard to pay. But in fact, the federal government that uses this form doesn't even ask wages to be put in as part of this form because it wasn't the purpose of the form. This is not a construct that would be fair. I have a document that was submitted uh, by um, Senator Pappas that um, asked the question, uh, will companies have to, I'm sorry, I'm, I've got to find the right piece of paper here. Um, here it is, okay. It says, uh, isn't this comparable worth? No, it is correct that EEO one job category contains more than one job title. The comparison of male and female employees average pay within these categories, however, just tells a business whether it needs to look further. Just tells a business whether it needs to look further. If there's a large pay gap between men and women within a category, then the business can choose to look into the reasons for the disparity. But this isn't about giving business information so that they can look at that. This is uh, uh, within the confines of a bill that has a CEO's signature saying they're equitable between this broad category without any clear definition of what we're really meaning, and then we're giving audit power to the Commission of Human Resources to withhold a certificate of compliance, and we direct the commissioner to do so within 15 days, and then we lay out very clearly the grievance process for if a business disputes it. So it's really disingenuous to, to say a business can choose to look into the reasons when we've laid forward a very strong framework for how the Commissioner of uh, Human Rights can address this. In addition, we have a fiscal appropriation for this section. If we turn to that section where we say in fiscal year 2015, we're going to appropriate 674000 for this section, and the agency base budget for this purpose is $426,000 each year in fiscal years 2016 and 2017. Again, to me, that says there's going to be a great deal of activity on behalf of the Human Rights Commissioner with regard to this particular section because that's the section the money is appropriated to. With regard to saying whether or not this is comparable worth, we just Googled what is comparable worth, and there's a definition by the free dictionary that basically lifts the exact statements within our section of the law saying the job evaluations are conducted by vocational experts, da, 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 including the skill, education, effort required, level of independent decision making required, the working conditions, and accountability. This section within the bill really is inserting into Minnesota law that companies who do business with the state of Minnesota must comply with the construct of comparable worth. And if it's not doing that, and Senator Pappas says it's not, then let's make it clear. When we say that we stand for women's economic security, that's a powerful statement, and that's a big idea. But when we pass a law, it's no longer an idea, it's actually enforceable language. And so when we're here in the legislature, we have some options. We can vote up or down, we can make amendments. When we have a conference report, we only get one more bite in the apple. And that last and final bite at the apple is to send it back to conference and just request minor change. In fact, advocates came forward and suggested just today, 
all you'd have to do to make this provision work is add the words job title. Or you could say, because that's actually the words that's used in that form. Or you could say job position. I'm not asking for a major change to this bill, but it's an important change and it will make the difference between having a framework whereby we actually do provide a foundation for Minnesota women to thrive and and be, emerge as the leaders we need very much demand in our midst, or we leave ourselves in a mess where we've got an uh, environment that's rich for litigation, uh, concern, and a, a real fear around a regulatory environment. So um, finally, members, at the end of the day, I want you to know that you can count on my vote regardless of whether or not this motion is accepted or not, because you don't always get everything you want. But I'm not willing to compromise my stand for women. And so I, I do uh, let you know that I will be supporting this bill. I am hopeful that we can just take 10 minutes, get back together, and add a couple words to clarify what our intentions are. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Bonoff. Uh